Horizon League Player of the Year. And Destiny Leo, she is out with a season-ending injury, and we're underway here in the Iowa Capitol. Caitlin Clark quickly getting a look and knocking down the... And it will stay biking ball. The most important thing in a zone, find the gaps, find the open spots. Caitlin Clark, no one in sight. Boom, baby. At the rim. Cleveland State does an excellent job getting paint touches, whether they be off the drive or cutting to the basket. They need to continue to do so late in the shot clock. Their head coach, Chris Kilsmeyer, an Iowa native, telling us principles from Coach Finley as well. Aim's not too far away from where we are in Des Moines right now, but you see that in his defense. And this is the Cleveland State team, 9 and 1. Caitlin Clark, long three, a different kind of logo. Goodman, Jim Kate Megan, not only for the net rankings, because getting potentially a neutral site win is certainly going to help them, but also to have other people within the state be able to see this squad. Gabby Marshall, no good from three. Goodman puts it back up, and she'll be shooting the shame. And Jan Jensen, the longtime assistant for the Hawkeyes, works with those post players. Herself. She's working the offensive glass. They're going from right to left, a little step back. Oh, my goodness. This is a team coming in with a whole lot of confidence. Nine straight wins. Clark finds herself open, and her second four possessions this entire season that they're having to make an adjustment for today. Clark pushing in transition, finds Molly Davis, but a turnover back. Nice finish there with the contest, and then Caitlin Clark. I mean, if it's not a 35-footer, she's not interested. Downhill speed, gets to the rim, but can't quite kiss it off glass. Kate Barton getting her first touch, goes all the way into the paint. Leon trying to drive into the gaps. I mean, they can drive into gaps, it draws two Using offense they have, but they're a team, Megan, that is shooting basically from the three-point line or at the rim. If you look at their numbers, that's pretty much it. They're not looking for those mid-range opportunities, oh. able to put it away. Oh. Slight threading the Got needle. That pain after that one. Look at that. Boom, right in there, threading the needle. Good job by Stolke, still handling it, staying ready for it and absorbing the contact. And Kaylin Clark's like, come on, finish the layup. That was beautiful. Potentially three on that play. But Stolke here, a chance at the free throw line where she has worked to make improvement this season. 15 of 20 after shooting 46% last year. And that was something this coaching staff has continued to make a focus of her game, too. They want her to be a post that can take contact. Crafty can hit it from three, but her ability to change speeds allows multiple Iowa defenders to miss on her, and she gets an open look to the rim. Caitlin Clark travels in the paint. Purdue loses it. Such a tough guard is a falter. She starts this fast break, and Kate Martin cannot finish it. Staying here, though, with Stolke. And Clark ready to call that one nearly down the floor as Iowa keeps working the glass. Here is Marshall. The spin, that's a tough angle. She can't get it to go. And then a foul called on Brooklyn Fort Davis. Tomorrow, more women's hoops action comes your way as Illinois and Missouri battle in a rivalry showdown. It's the Bragging Rights rivalry looking for two in a row is the alive game when you can get the other team in foul trouble, stop the clock, put points on the board, that's in your favor. Vikings staying in their zone. Fierbach along the baseline has it tipped. Clark, the jab fake, and she will get out of it. They go into the post and the ball on the clock with Clark, the inbounder. And she finds Stolke vertical. inside. Clark knocks it away and takes it away, but it's still in play. She's lucky that didn't go awry. Clark weaving her way through, leaves it. Purdue sees her chance and is stopped. Clark perfectly in rhythm. She still attacks at the rim. Layup not there. Beautiful fast break. A lot of logos on this floor. And if there's a logo, Caitlin Clark will find it. Number 22 doing big things early. 
Very good start. Maples has that blocked. Iowa's done a nice job defensively, staying down, making tough shot attempts happen for the Vikings. Iowa also adjusting to this zone by Cleveland State, something they don't see very much of in this season. Here's Molly Davis getting he into the Goodman off targets and snaring the board is Goodman. Foul called is Maple. Oh, her. A falter is a bulldozer, just has no fear when she's on the court. Talking to Coach Bluter today, someone who accepts her role. She's not going to be creating her own shot, but she's going to do the dirty work and do it well, especially on the glass and plays like that. We need a uh, timer of some Clark. Purdue shooting it with so much confidence, shoulder square to the basket on the catch. Beautiful look. Floats it up just off target. And Goodman, just by being there in the spot, made that a really tough look. Guerrero. No good there, and Goodman gobbling up another rebound. Davis pushing it up the floor, loses her footing, and she comes down hard, grasped at that knee. Her knee just looks like it got stuck on the ground. It's two for two. Iowa cannot give Purdue any sort of room. She is so confident, does not need a lot of space to get that shot off. Goodman. Oops. Miscommunication leads to a turnover and a falter pushing has no numbers. I was always had a fearless player. Kate Martin is one of those players for the Hawkeyes. They have always that player that's willing to do the dirty work. Fearbach lines up a three. No surprise, a falter right there. Clark patient. Clark will slow things down for the final shot of the first quarter. Great seal by Goodman, but it was knocked away. Even better positioning by Fort Davis. And they're seeing their squad leading here going into quarter number two. It grinds her way in. And Cleveland State's missed a few of those getting deep. They're going and expecting that contact to happen, but you have to try to shoot it to make it, not shoot it to get the foul called. Clark guarded by Purdue surveying this zone. Clark can't get free, but she will the second time. She's fouled hard. Give it up, and then gets right to the rim. You see right there when the block was gone and up. A lot of contact there. Yeah, and hit her in the face as well. Foul going on Fort Davis. That was a heads up play by Clark, time ticking down for that give and go to make something happen. Stopped on a dime, my goodness. Caitlin Clark wants to put an end to that. By good. Purdue getting into the paint, having the defense collapse, open three opportunity. It's a five point game. Iowa's led by as many as 11. Stolke, good position, backing down her defense. This kind of stage and have this performance right now. Vikings are taking it to Iowa right now. Marshall's been quiet today. She sneaks along the baseline. They got to get it back inside to Stolke. Martin turning around, not there. Stolke beats two green jerseys. Thomas trying to get the step. Stolke able to corral it. Molly Davis, the pump fake and drive, dishing it off to Martin. Cleveland State, and they've been able to exploit the Vikings. Down in the paint, getting offensive rebound. Stolke jumping to the ball, using her strength and her size to go back up there. She is so quick and athletic. When she's running down the floor at top, plays like a guard in the sense of her athleticism. Something has stuck with me when we were first introduced to Hannah Stolke. Board like Nas Hillman, who can jump like Nas Hillman. And that's Clark walking it up. Stolke wants it again inside, and there's the speed room. Can't make the Hawkeyes pick. Clark up ahead. Davis. Limit transition opportunities for the Hawkeyes, but the last couple of minutes, Iowa's been able to get up and down the floor at ease. That full head of steam that he was trying to prevent. 
Cleveland State still settling into that zone. Davis penetrating and the floater not there. Stokey. An offensive rebound on the right side of the basket. And you wake up in the next possession, she's doing it again and again and again. She's getting positioning before the shot goes up, and that is why she has the advantage getting to go board time and time again. You ever see Groundhog's Day? Oh, yes. A classic. On Wednesday, we've got men's hoops. The Hawkeyes taking on UMBC. Live coverage begins at 8 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network, and the Fox Sports app. Maple splitting defenders. Another miss at the rim. Cleveland State getting some deep looks. Martin. Aver. My goodness, if she catches it with her feet set, that ball's going in every time. That's a player who led all of Division II last year, 110 threes on the season, extending its lead to 14. Davis stepping in the passing lane, and she's got the pick six. They're reaching this game yet. They just keep hitting shots. Iowa has to be locked in defensively to try to put this team away, but Cleveland State, they play so physical, and they're not scared of this type of environment. Still playing with a ton of confidence. Martin almost loses it along the baseline. Marshall, nice little mid-range. The Alobos, a little hesitation. She is blocked by Goodman. And it's back to the Hawkeyes. And a blocking foul on this side. Martin. This is a team that on the fly when Destiny Leo went down for the season had to completely reshape their identity from what they were of this season and making sure that they're still Arriro throws it up. And tracking it down, a falter. She is a magnet to the ball off the rim. And she does everything, all the little things. She practically drives the bus to the arena at this point, right? <laughs> Clark. Nice put little. it down from mid-range. Taylor McCain, the sophomore, new into the game. Clark trying to give and go again. Fierbach will take a it. A long three that just grazes rim. Clark in transition, yes! Just a couple minutes ago, and now we've got this. Sloan, she like slips too. Like she kind of slipped afterwards, you can't see it there, but her feet kind of came out from under her. Like kind of fell backwards, I mean. She's Diana Taurasi, she's Steph Curry. She's insert great shooter. It's unbelievable. Earlier this season, she's the hardest worker we've got. She is so selfless. And she makes impact plays just like that. Clark, the step back. Oh, she had the heel on. Hey, Caitlin, you got to get some smaller shoes maybe next time. <laughs> Purdue and Clark from the logo. I mean, we'd be here all night. These two are draining them right now. Under a minute to play for the Hawkeyes. Clark, the other logo, that's left short. And putting right. Short sweet to the point, leaves you wanting more. <laughs> Shot clock off for Clark. McCabe, lethal from long range. And that will be the end of the first. All four Iowa three-pointers have come from the hands of Caitlin Clark. And she's scored 20 points or more every she single game. She was in good shots. And that's a bit of a mix of keeping it for herself and, you know, shooting it from the logo like we're accustomed to seeing. She's also did a nice job coming off of screens and scoring off the ball. But her ability to create, I mean, she just opens up so much offensively for the Hawkeyes because you have to have a hand in her face the moment she crosses half court. How about Hannah Stolke off the bench? A fantastic first half, 13 points, seven rebounds. Stolke's athleticism and size has made her such a tough person to guard down low in the paint because she's got a quick first step. She angles her body perfectly, and she's boxing. Uh, and credit how Iowa has attacked the zone. They're moving the ball quickly. That's forcing the zone to shift, and they're able to get the ball inside down low in high percentage areas, and they're absorbing that contact from Cleveland State. 
Cleveland State staying with that zone, a part of their identity. Jordana Reisma in the middle, only played seven minutes in the first half due to foul trouble as Iowa goes deep into the clock and Marshall and Maples hits them both. When you see Clark getting picked up full court. Drawing a lot of attention before she is going to reset up this offense. You see her in a box and one now on Clark. The give and go. Goodman to Martin. Nice job. But the ball movement by Iowa. Get the ball to the high post and cut off. I love a good cut off the high post. Nice job by Martin. That's where Iowa becomes really dangerous. It's not necessarily when Kaelin Clark has 40 points a game. It's when Clark has 20 and Martin has 20 and Goodman has 20 or 15 and you have someone like Stolke get 13. When you have those types of balanced scoring for multiple players on the floor, that's when Iowa becomes a really difficult Maples team. Lining up a three, that's off target. Knocked away, still Iowa back. Face guarding her the whole entire time, just trying to make it difficult for her to catch the ball, but uh, she caught the ball there. And offensive. Watch for the extending on the arm. A nice move by Clark to get open, but you see that arm. Oh, there really wasn't an extension. You know, incredulity. Can you spell that? And say it in a up. sentence. <laughs> she was incredulous at the call. That's an elite word, Sloan Martin. Thank you for the praise. It's Molly Davis for three rattles. Good Cleveland State was charged up in the first half, bringing intensity here as Clark working her Cleveland way. Cleveland State switched up their defense in the second half, going box and one. Purdue is not leaving Clark's sight, but then nice job by Clark being available, cutting into the open gap. Scoring, boom. A point away from tying her former AAU teammate here in Iowa, the former Iowa State star Ashley Jones, who bounced around the WNBA last year. Yeah, not bad at all. You see some of the names in that list. Caitlin Clark loves to Maya. surpass Kelsey Plum at her current pace right now, 29 points per game. Looking about 17 games this season. Marshall, no good from three. Stokey on the glass again. And the, the board every time. Stripped away by Clark. Gets a piece and sparks the fast break, which finishes with a Marshall yeah, Lee. It's a volleyball national championship game. Our Emily Eamon down there covering it, killing it. Beautiful basketball. High in hip pocket. It's a nice finish on the fadeaway. Clark, quick trigger. Another. Maples cannot silence this crowd. Leaking out ahead is Marshall. Sold out in 45 minutes upon tickets being available because they bought a ticket to the Clark Show. And Caitlin Clark making everybody's money worth it. Continue to watch her climb. Next on that list, Rachel Banham looking at that Big Ten. 3,041 points. You look at how many games it could take, not just for the women's all-time record, but the men's all-time record by Pete Maravich as well, within her reach. Look, when Kelsey Plum was playing in college, there was nobody that was ever going to touch that scoring record. And Kelsey Plum, one of the best pros in the WNBA. Because I was wondering how many games <laughs> it would take. But I'm not a math person, so glad to see some in. The math is mathing. Looking to add more. Including Rachel Banham as well, sitting in eighth. Caitlin Clark, too long that time. But we'll stay hot. We're looking down Big Ten. And for Iowa, that means Minnesota and Michigan State. This is Clark, Miss Fires from three three. Three. in their control. Look, Iowa has the size right now. 6'2", 6'3", 6'1". I want to so turn to it. Fort Davis. She leaves it short. But even there, you see Iowa's size and physicality down low. You have Stolke and Martin. Both are six feet, six two. It's tough to shoot over. Tierbach turns it over. She's got 20 for the Vikings. Yeah, she's a baller. Just automatic with that shot release. Kaylin Clark trying to muscle her way inside. Finds a falter, but she lets it. There's a falter. No surprise with the rebound as Clark surveys the floor and draws the foul on Purdue as the Hawkeyes get it back.
Clark whips it to the high post. Great ball oh. movement. That's Marshall for three. It doesn't go down. And a falter. Right but the there. stat does not necessarily indicate the ability. That shot almost goes in. Gabby Marshall is a really good three-point shooter. Shot has not been able to fall. That was a great pass by Sydney Falter, though, getting it right to the shooting tier. When the first 24 games of the season, she was at 25%. And her teammates had to constantly tell her, just keep shooting. Don't put your head down, because she can make plays like that. But a turnover will give it back to the Vikings. Oh, that's a nice job. Oh, yeah, no, that they called it a block. That was the right call. It was a good. Yeah, she was falling to the ground as that happened. Both yeah, She was grimacing quite a bit. I'm grimacing from here. But Marshall is someone, we talk about her three-point shooting, has never been below 37% for a season. Career 39%. You see those free throw numbers. Out. Maples forces her way in. Cleveland State has not been able to finish inside. Clark, transition three. Yes. Molly Davis stepping into the passing lane. Another chance for Iowa. Clark wants it. And a jump ball. It's a humor sometimes. When you're Caitlin Clark, you can shoot it whenever you want. Look at this shot. It's automatic. I mean, she steps into it. One, two, shoulder squared, feet set. She's having a ball out there right now. And you know who loves it? None other than Mr. Clark. Although he wasn't smiling there, but he was clapping. <laughs> you know how special for Clark, too? Her parents go to almost every single game. She's only two hours away in Iowa City at college. It's a real homecoming game for her, though. Three-point play. And now she's just toying with everybody. I love that she chose to take off from where she did because had she kept going, it gave the defense an opportunity to set up for a charge. That's where Kaylin Clark's IQ comes out on display. It's so difficult to predict when she's going to pull up. Davis has it knocked away, regains control. Goodman back into play. Snaking her way in, and the layups have just not fallen for the Vikings. A lot of times they've been contested because the Hawkeyes have been doing a good job of getting back in transition. 9 nothing run for Iowa. Inside the final minute of the third. Set on the clock for Fierbach. Gearbach has to do something with it. Finds Davis instead. The floater just grazing front iron. And Goodman cleans. To have somebody like Caitlin Clark, who has taken on so much from a national perspective. She signed with Gatorade. She's got deals with State Farm, Nike, all these major brands. And she's 21 years old. And she's had to handle that and being a basketball player and being a good teammate and being a student. There's a lot that she has on her plate, and yet she's been able to handle it with so much grace and composure. Staring down an all-time record, trying to bring this team back to the Final Four. There certainly is a lot on her plate. But with us here in Des Moines, it makes me think of her new Gatorade contract, yeah. which is fantastic to see that brand donating $22,000 to her foundation. You think about the work she's also done with the Coralville Food Pantry as well, as Marshall still can't get that three to fall. This entire game is crazy. Four different players, and all four have double figures. A produced type of player, oh my goodness. Clark. But uh, Caitlin Clark does that as well. An efficient night for Clark, 42 points, 19, 11 of 19, as she forces her way up the court. Good. She's pulling on my jersey. I mean, this is just a broken play, and then that's the signature Clark step out. She loves going right to left. It's like a layup for her. Almost like a mic in. Essentially. They're going to invent drills called Clarks, and you just shoot 30 footers <laughs> back and back. Okay, Martin can't finish inside, gets it right back. Marshall going to slow it down for this Hawkeye offense that has been rolling all night long. 87 points, and Clark will add more. 
Another Hawkeye steal. And Clark whipping it to Martin. And one. To add a lot of different numbers to a lot of different stat categories, starting with the points. I mean, you have to literally be right in her face at all times. She needs no space. And then the pass, threading the needle perfectly to Kate Martin down the floor. to Purdue like Velcro. Davis finds the seam, nice. finds Stolke, and she's got the Hawkeyes scoring at such a high level, and it's been a team effort. Great pass by Davis. And Davis is a point guard, really. Has that IQ, and she has that ball handling ability. Double-double double for her. 17 points, 13 rebounds, one shy of her career high on the glass. Cleveland State, in the first half especially, they did a great job of getting to the basket. Then Iowa was able to blow this game open because they created second chance opportunities and use our physicality. There she is again, 38 points. This time her foot was not out of bounds like in the first half. Look, she's gonna, you get a high five and you get a high five. Yeah, like you said, two hours away, but this is a really cool experience. They've knocked down 10. That's as many as Iowa in this contest. If Cleveland State's going to do some damage in the horizon like this season. In every essence of the term, you get a high five, you get a high five. Everybody in the state of Iowa having a blast. The 2009-2010 season, I mean, this is her 48th all-time, her fifth 30-point game of the season. Just the numbers go on and on the way she can fill the stats. Here's Horizon League Player of the Year. We were 10 of 17 from three. The reason why Iowa was able to pull away is because they were able to dominate in the paint with second chance opportunities using that level of physicality. But make no mistake, this is a very good Cleveland State team. A falter. She had the same starting five for three years straight. They didn't go more than six, maybe seven deep on a good day. Now, Iowa, you have all this depth. That is massive for the longevity of a season with how hard college basketball is from a physicality perspective. Injuries are going to happen. Everybody's going to be tired. You have to have depth, and teams that have a lot of players they can go to on the bench are the teams that can make deep tournament runs. Backdoor cut to Falter makes it happen. To be most dangerous and most successful are the ones where the players understand their roles. A team, everybody understands their role, and everyone's played within themselves, and it's been a recipe for success early on. And now, officially, everyone has entered the floor. McCabe leaves that short Still, but. It's always good to uh, to get these types of wins where everybody can feel really good. All Team members 21, nine threes. Oh, wow. Just non-conference game, Loyola. Then firmly in Big Ten playing at home against Minnesota and then against Michigan State, and I don't know about you, Megan, that team, the Spartans, got don't... really good sophomores. That sophomore class, Mara Braun is a player that has Big Ten Player of the Year potential. Someone to keep an eye on. Kenise Johnson, no good from three. Fighting on the floor. 114 to play, and Iowa ball. Everybody seeing floor time. Coming in, Coach Bluter said, a win to... Denise Johnson wrangling the rebound. Had a three-second differential as we look to close this one out. Cindy Moore. Let's see who else knew can get on the board. And this time, it's Jim Feet. They shoot 51% from the floor, their fourth time surpassing 100 points. They fall short of their season high of 113, which came against Drake. But this is an offensive powerhouse this season, as we've come to expect from Lisa Bluter's squads. Shy of her second 
40th. She ends with 38 points on 13 of 21 shooting, nine threes, five assists, and five rebounds as this team feels the energy, the love from this Des Moines crowd. Feeling just like Carver. Caitlin Clark mentioning her impacts. Hannah Stolke, a fantastic game as well. But in front of her hometown crowd, the West Des Moines native put on a show. Nine threes and an efficient night overall. 13 of 21 for 38 points for her. And Megan McEwen is standing by with Caitlin Clark after her outstanding 38-point performance.